We'll start off with a prayer huh? to Guru first. If you know, join me. Om Akhanda Mandala Karam Vyaptam Yena Characharam Tatpadam Darshitam Yena Tasmai Shri Guru Venama Agnana Timirandhasya Jnana Anjana Shalakaya Chakshurun Melitam Yena Tasmai Shri Guru Venama Guru Prama, Guru Vishnu, Guru Devo Maheshwara, Guru Sakshat Parabrahma, Tasmai Shri Guru Venama, Matra Devo Bhava, Pitra Devo Bhava, Acharya Devo Bhava, Atiti Devo Bhava, Om Sahana Bhavatu, Sahana Bhunaktu, Sahaviryam Karavavahai, Tejasvinavadita mastu mave vishavahai Om Shanti 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 Hari Om So, I took upon this to kind of really help you out with your pujas. Because we all do so-called pujas, all of us do pujas at home, simple, complicated, whatever. When my father died, I had the occasion to meet the last person that my father would regularly go and see. Prior to his passing away, for three years he stopped going to temples. But one temple he would go. So I asked my mother, why, how come he went to that? He went to Mukambika and he would go to this temple. So she said, he goes there because he, wa he likes to be with that priest. So when my father left, I felt I missed him very much. So I thought I should go. I'd like to go and see the person that my father uh, used to go regularly. So I was drawn to that. So I went, <clears throat> I met him, <clears throat> and then he took me to his madam where they stay. And he said, how can I help you? because he regarded my father so highly, he was ready to help. So I said, well, I kind of like to know more about pujas. In other words, improve my pujas. So then he asked, so what have you been doing so far? So I explained what I've been doing. He says, you've done nothing. <laughs> you've done nothing. Well, I, I, <clears throat> I didn't take it as an offense because I know who he is because of my mother and all. So I, I had a feeling he's coming from some state to tell me that. Uh, and then he asked me a series of questions, you know, to which I answered. He said, oh, okay. And so I said, should I come here? No, 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 no. I'll come to your house, to your puja place, and I'll teach you. That began the journey for me a discovery of what puja was all about. I realized, you know, I was doing some things, but no idea that this whole world was there, available, and how, and what is available is up to you. Okay. You'd say, okay, this is good enough for me. Or you can say, okay, now I've got this, but I want more. Then more is available. So you can go as far as you want with this because it's a very, very big world. And you know, if you look length and breadth of India, from the poorest home to the richest uh, millionaire or whatever, pujas are being done. Worship is being done in the house, right? So, so then I thought, I would like to help make your pujas more efficient. So it's up to you how far you're going to use it. But I can give you some tools that will help you make your puja is efficient. Mm -hmm. Now, is it, is it just, do you want to just do its entirety once every now and then? I would practically suggest that is do whatever you are doing every day, but at some point you may want to do much more than that. So when you want to do much more than that, you have this available. Mm -hmm. Okay, and I also have an agenda in that I'm seeing one, two, three, four of you and June 20th is the actual anniversary of the Devi. 
that day I would like you all to do the puja. And the, the way we are going to do it, I was remembering many years ago in Cerritos when I used to have the Sanskar Kendras, Vishwanda Parishad Sanskar Kendras. We had by request Surya Puja done. We had 10, no, 12 children, teenagers really, in a circle. Mm -hmm. They had a rehearsal. Mm -hmm. Imagine, they were ready even for a rehearsal of the puja. Now think, do we ever rehearse pujas? We don't, do we? No. We, had, we did a rehearsal of the puja. They all participated very well. And then on one particular Sunday or whatever it is, they did the actual puja. And the beauty was they all moved at the same time. So if they're doing uh, dhuparati, all of them did at the same time. And I think one of the mothers has videotaped it. Mm -hmm. It was so beautiful to see the coordination amongst all of them. You know, I don't remember they said the words, they probably did at this point. Like they do the Ganga Arti. Yeah. yeah, and everything, even when they're doing the uh, Achanam uh, Samarpayami, Arghyam Samarpayami, all their hands move together in a circle. And so I think something like that, something close to that, I would like that to be done on June 20th, which is a Thursday. So I'm letting you know ahead of time that it's on a weekday. I would love for you to be able to do that. You know, so I'm, that is one thing that, the agenda that I have, because what you get after that was over, you know how teenagers are, right? Nobody spoke for a long time. The kids didn't speak and the mothers were so surprised because they're getting them, trying to get them into conversation and the kids, don't want to party. They're not, they are not rude, but nothing's coming out because they were left with a certain silence that they didn't want to break. Mm -hmm. So it's it's wonderful, all that puja. Yeah, so I'm going to ask you a few questions that will help me, okay? I've, when we say puja, I'm just saying worship at this point. So you all worship at home, right? Um, how often do you do that? Every day, every day, every day. So, something is done every day. And and then what do you do? Just what 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 are the mechanics of what you do? If I can, uh, if you can let me know one by one, that'll help me. Sure, I lit a lamp, then lit the agarbatti. Huh? Agarbatti. Agarbatti. Uh -huh. And then I'll be reading, chanting the mantras, whatever sloka. Then I'll read a story, good chapter, or whatever. Any sometimes there's stories involved in it. And in your puja room, do you have different, different Devata pictures? Or? Mostly it's Baba. Huh? Shirdi Sai Baba mostly. But well, I, you I mean one main one is Shirdi Sai Baba and then around that you have others? Yeah, Ganapati. Yeah. And all of them. Okay. Yeah. And and you did do this every day? Yeah. Yeah, okay. Is there anything more you do on some days? You do you do anything extra or this like, is yeah, whenever there is a festival or something, I recite more mantras or something like that. Okay. Okay. So you extend it. You extend right. it a bit. Yeah. And um I offer the Naivati Matan and I offer water. Yeah, okay. I don't okay. do the arti. Yeah, I mean whatever you do so that I know what mechanical things you do. Okay. Uh Shrikan? When mom is not there, I used to do like, uh, you know, uh, I mean, once in, every day I would do like, uh, offer the lamp, yeah. agarbatti, uh -huh. water, fruit, uh -huh. right, uh, flowers if I get, if, if not, but on Fridays I used to do is I used to clean up everything, uh, clean the whole the altar whole and then like I do Abhishekam with water, then milk, uh -huh. then uh, like uh, put the uh, samrani. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All over, and then I recite like some more. I mean, I'll do a little. I used to do a little longer, all of that, uh, like the mantras. Yeah. Okay. And then, yeah, and, and you, do you have any central main one, or you have Ganapati several? Is the Ganapati is yeah, the central Ganapati one, is the and central then, one. then you have others. Other, others yeah, 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 around. Yeah. I think mom put that everyone around. The Amma will probably be doing more. <laughs> yeah. After she started, after she came, she's doing all the puja. I'm just touching her feet and taking yeah. every power. <laughs> 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 but Amma, is there more? Is there much more than what he said that you do, Amma? Ah, uh, this day, first day we clean it. Then light the lamp. Lamp, lamp and uh huh. Lamp, uh, some haldi or something like that. Okay, you put tilak for the 
ಆದಿತ್ಯ ಹೃದಯ ಅಭಿಷೇಕ ಪಾರ್ವತಿ ಸೊಟ್ಸ್ Uh-huh. then i do my kriya practice afterwards yeah um but at, depending at on the, depending on the weather if i have flowers in my garden i will offer it. jasmine or rose or something okay agarbatti occasionally i'm not really regular about my agarbatti yeah, sometimes but, but, yeah. sometimes i will do it okay. because it bothers the people in the house right, so right, um, right. i have to suggest that um the japanese people make i mean you come in the house i'll show you that's minimum allergy causing insect oh, okay? is theirs ah. okay so and that's the one i light inside the house every day uh, minimum allergy it's made it made by and you will see the residue is also minimal ah. on that one ah. so that's yeah good. okay so that pretty it's much what uh, you do every day yeah, and then uh, so and if i do any i do some, with my kriya i do some gayatri mantra all my japa is silent in okay uh uh-huh. um i used to do a lot of stotra chanting before yeah but now it's no. i just do some other uh, okay things prescribed by but something you do every on a daily yes, basis every, apparently every, all four of you uh, do something yes. on a daily basis okay yeah so let's see today is thai puja uh today is a uh, poundami thai Here. thai pu- yeah pu- yeah puja man uh, thai puja what is the significance for muruga for so, muruga so, okay so. okay for kartike yeah so now we are going into the types you could see it uh, that one it says types of so what you have all been describing so far goes into okay. that's what you're doing mm. on a daily basis mm. okay right and i'm not interfering with that with any of this knowledge you do whatever mm. you continue to i just want to give you a perspective mm. where that falls in it so is that the exterior hmm? uh, exterior worship the nitya no nitya means every day every day mm-hmm. every day whatever you do daily is nitya mm. this and then the next one is called kamya when you have a particular desire mm-hmm. then you do a puja in order to fulfill that desire make that desire your, your um what shall i say you are presenting that desire to the universe to the divine through a puja mm-hmm. those are called kamya pujas so i'm going to ask you if you can think of any kamya pujas when sri devi kadga mala The, when you do the khadka mala then it's a kamya puja yeah. you have a particular purpose yes. behind it all right anything anybody else i did the argala stotra argala stotra when you're doing the argala stotra it becomes a kamya yeah. because you have a particular desire yeah. attached to it yeah. okay so that's the uh, that's the cat- category that that falls into and that's not necessarily it could be b- much bigger than this in its intensity mm-hmm. in its intensity it is 
See, this becomes almost mechanical. Oh, mechanical. Yes. Mm. Yeah, really. Mechanical. Yeah, it becomes, and we have to uh, agree to that because uh, these are things I cleared with my uh, Guruji, Tirmini, because um, I, I asked him, so, so you do, you're doing this every day, so <laughs> does it become mechanical? He says, you bet it becomes mechanical. Because <laughs> he's doing it in the temple, right? Right. Do you know how many steps? I had to learn 79, mm -hmm. 79 steps when I had the Devi in, in LA, 79 steps. So, my gosh, so yeah, even, even as he was training me after words, he, we come out and sit, that's my question time. No notes, nothing. So one day I asked, he was good about answering. He said, so does it become mechanic? He said, you bet it becomes mechanic. <laughs> <laughs> so, so that's being honest, okay. Then we had Naimittika. That is associated with time, with seasons, with time. So yesterday night, it was a uh, lunar eclipse. Okay. So, so I was told that's a very powerful time too. So I did a lot of chanting. chanting. Okay, yeah. so that is an example of Naimittika. How about Makar Sankrat? Yes. Time associated, yeah. right? How about Navaratri? Yeah, time associated. Yeah. All of those are, Festival. come and give me some more. Shivaratri, Janmashtami, Skanda Shashti, Repetitive, Repetitive, Repetitive. And don't you think that becomes even more involved than this and this? Yes. Right? So though these are the various types of pujas we have. I'm only using ones that we as individuals do. I'm not touching the temple part. Mm. I'm not I'm not touching it. That's a whole different ball game. Okay. Okay. So far, so good. Good. Elements of a puja. Mm -hmm. For a puja to be efficient. Mm -hmm. Efficient is the word I'm talking efficient. about. Mm -hmm. If you don't care about efficiency, no problem. <laughs> Hey, come on, I'm just going to light a lamp today. That's all time I have, Bhagawan. <laughs> no problem. Okay. <laughs> Absolutely nothing wrong in that. But at some point, you, you, if you wish that I, there is a, this is a technology. And every technology has some kind of success or siddhi. Okay. If you crave for something like that, then you must have these elements. Yes, tantra, mantra, yantra or vigraha, this, this will be kind of, these are connected, okay? Tantra is what? Tantra is just methodology. That's all they give this big name to tantra. Yeah. Oh, this is your bad tantra. This. It simply means methodology. That's all tantra is. You have to have a me methodology to do things. And that method methodology has already been uh, given to us uh, from way past. So in India, there are different types of groupings of the Tantra, okay? I didn't take all of them, I just took some main one. The land mass of India is divided into three mekhalas, mm -hmm. like like um, like the waist borders, yeah, mm. like a like a girdle, right? Mm. Like a girdle. Mm. Each within each mekhala, there are sixty four tantras mm. types. Mm. Sixty four. Sixty four. Each one has sixty four. Mm. Is that amazing? Yeah. yeah. Like when I came back from India. One of the things I told my friends here is, I said, I've always felt India as an obsession with the divine. I'm even more convinced <laughs> India has an obsession with the divine. It's really an obsession, I'm telling you, and it hasn't stopped. It hasn't stopped. That's, and these three mekhalas are called Ashwa, Ratha, and Vishnu Kranta. These are the three. Kranta is, is the term that's common to all. Ashwakranta, Rathakranta, and Vishnukranta. These are the three mekhalas. And each mekhala has 64 different sampradayas. Then we have another grouping, Kashmira, Gauda, and Keralia. Kashmira, Gauda, you will be surprised to the south when you take Andhra and all of that. 
Kashmiri one is one that has influenced it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Ha. When you go to the east, of course, northeast, it's the Gauda Sampradaya. Mm -hmm. Don't confuse with Hare Krishna mm -hmm. and all, okay? Mm -hmm. The Sampradaya is much more, much more um, heavier and more complicated than what the Hare Krishnas, the Iskon people are, because the Gauda is being associated with them a lot. Which is unfortunate, and of course, Kerala. Kerala Tantra goes all the way north to Saurashtra, even. Mm. From Saurashtra all the way down to, say, Kanyakumari area. Mm. That grouping falls under. It's just out of convenience they're using the word Kerala, I think. It doesn't mean that Kerala people influence mm. them. No, 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 no. Mm. It's just a commonality, mm. but the people who are doing it to a great extent, continuing it without a break, are Kerala people. Mm. That's why. Okay, it's not that these people, Kerala people didn't influence the Saurashtras. No, I think a lot of invaders probably came to the Kashmir area and maybe... Uh, no, Kashmir Tantra is very, very, very complicated. Mm -hmm. Com very, very complicated. Most of our Shaiva Sampradayas came from Kashmir. Mm -hmm. You know, Veera Shaivism of Ka Karnataka came from Kashmir. Mm -hmm. No, Lingayat mm -hmm. community, mm -hmm. oh, it's all... Their basis is Kashmir Sampradaya. Mm -hmm. So it's fascinating, you know, India didn't have these kind of breakups like we have now. You know, traditions were go flowing in and out very nicely. Mm -hmm. Very, very nicely. So, methodology. Now, what is the methodology that we use for a Nitya Puja? Generally, we do whatever our parents did. Yes. If our parents were doing a particular thing, then you end up doing whatever they did, add a little bit more or remove a little bit, right? So that, that's the kind of methodology that we are using, okay? And we tend to keep it going. And we like to teach our children too and say, okay, this is what you need. When my boys were young, you know, around evening worship is more important in Kerala, not morning. Morning people do individual, but evening Sandhya Vandana is very important. Um, for Kerala, as a family, we get together. So my boys would know Ishisha time, they would say, not Ishura. They can't say Ishura, they were too young. They would say, Ishisha time, come on, they'll call each other up, reluctantly come. Because <laughs> <laughs> they have to recite all the verses, right? So anyway, so that's what we are doing as far as Nitya is. But is there more? Yes, now you know. Yeah. There is more available. Okay. Say, for instance, more I will tell you, like, I'll have to just kind of point out, suppose you have a Vaishnava background. Mm -hmm. Chances are you're going to be using the Agamas, Vaishnava Agam, based on the Vaishnava treatises. Mm -hmm. Little bit, you know. You'll be doing little, little things that only the Vaishnavas do. Mm -hmm. And if, you're a, if your background is Shaiva, then of course Vibhuti becomes very, very important, you know those things become features of what you do. So it could be a little bit more because of that, what your background is, okay? It's important to have a methodology. The other one is mantra. Uh, so people sometimes say, so if it's okay, so say a mantra in our native language, mother tongue, mm -hmm. it's not a question of okay or not okay. It's, if that's what you want to do, Efficient, Sanskrit. Mm. Sanskrit. Yeah. We talk Sanskrit. about efficiency, it is Sanskrit. Yeah. Why? Because of the vibrations. Yeah. Vibrations of that language. Vibration of how you operate your mouth as you say it. Mm -hmm. Vibrations of how, what it can change around, um, around you. you know, and I think it was before I left, something happened in the, in the shrine after I finished chanting, must have been Om, because that's all I, most of the time it's only Om I do there. And I left, and I still kept hearing a sound. It was the bell. The Tibetan bell had picked up the sound, and it was continuing on its own. Mm. So think, it's not something that I did as much as I just became an instrument for that vibration, which, is, which belongs to Sanskrita. I just am an instrument, right? And you already know physics, physical laws and all. You, you strike one, 
Mm -hmm. And it's, um, I love that experiment when I go to with my grandchildren because now they have a lot of instruments. So from one in one room, they will do this to see if it goes all the way to the other, <laughs> other room, you know. So um, anyway, so Sanskrit mantras are very, very important. And manana trayate iti mantra, that which is repeated over and over again. And if it is Sanskrit, it is more valuable to us, okay? Um, I'll come back to this one. Then yantra. Yantra is what? What, what do you think yantra is? Two dimensions. Yeah, when we think about yantra, we think about um, like a mandala yeah. with triangles and all. But not that alone. Okay, we need to move a little bit. That is good. I'm saying yes, that makes sense that, you know, the diagrammatic, the diagrammatic formations came before Vidyaka. Mm. Because remember the Vedic people, what did they do? They were having ha the Havan Kund, right? And remember, the Havan Kund was not a simple triangle like the one I have here or, or like the Ari Samajis do a copper pot. No, they, the building of uh, Agni Kunda was was an art, was a technology, the bricks, they'd still do that. The Agnihotras, the Agnishtoma, and in Kerala what they do every 12 years. It, there's so much of precision and rules, what, is, what material they should use, how they should build, which day they should choose, all of that, right? And all geometric, by the way. From that developed the concept of our like right behind here, you'll see, this is one of Maharudra Yantra. One of the most complicated ones that I've ever done in a form of a Yantra is this one, and we did it in Mount Rainier, mm. in Mount Rainier area. So I had help though, one of my students who's a climber, he's very much into this. So, it, so that came out of the Vedic period and it is prior to this. These, this vigraha, yantra, and mantra. Mantra is always the sukshma sharira of the devata. The devata has a body, a subtle body. That subtle body is what we are creating with mantra. Okay, we are tapping into the subtle body. Does that make sense? Okay. Yantra is the sthula. Mm. Yantra is the sthula. Okay. Now, as I said, this and this will get really very close because there's some things in between that I will tell you. Vigra is manusha. Mm. Vigra is made to look almost like human mm -hmm. beings, right? Mm. So that becomes the manusha rupa mm -hmm. of the devata. In between, you have very many things. I'll give you an example. I call my student who is a priest, and I said, Sai, I remember in the paddy fields in Kerala, they would build a makeshift temple with made out of hut, like a hut made out of uh, coconut. And inside, there would be a, tab a small table covered with red cloth, and a lamp, and a mirror. That was it. So my question to him was whether was the is the is the wick turned towards the mirror? Or I know the answer, but I wanted to be sure because I know he knows much more than I do. So is, is it turned towards the mirror or out? He said, no, 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 it's turned towards the mirror because it's the reflection of the devta. Mm -hmm. Look at that. That's it. Mm -hmm. No day, no picture, mm -hmm. nothing. A lamp turned towards the Mirror mm -hmm. becomes the yantra then, mm -hmm. or the vigraha. So in, I'm going in between because there is, I'm not haven't found a name, but there are things in between here. Mm. Isn't that amazing? Mm. Yeah. Can you think of other things that people will do? But we know yantra. We already know that. You already know about vigraha and all of that. Can you think of other things? So even even the our shivalinga is not protected. There you go. Yeah. There you go. Mm. So here shivalinga will fall into that category. Mm. And you got me from uh, yeah. Andhra, yeah. Yeah. the the stone sacred yeah. to Durga. 
ಗಣೇಶ್ಲಾಂಟಿಂಗ್ಸಿಕ್ರೇಟೆಡ್ಶಿಪ್ in kerala cloth paintings and also the muggu we call it kolam kolam yeah what, oh yeah that uh, what is called that um is all the vatapatra sai yeah yeah that it's the, the, there's a better word for that yes it, those floral floral mm-hmm. one that is also then that also falls here it's closer to vigraha because it's the, you do see do a human the, shape the nagadevata so so they do the uh, Yeah, yeah. I'm I'm not not getting the 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 word. word What is the word for it? Uh, um, anyway, it'll come. All of those are, again, it's not just simply freehand drawing. There's rules, regulations as to the material, color and everything. So, cloth painting, for a long time, there was a Chamunda Devi in, on the way to my home mm-hmm. in, in Tarandrum. She was, uh, it was just the painting that was being worshipped. so you can see all varieties of stuff um when uh, you go to mukambika temple and you, there's the bus will stop at one place okay and this man with dreadlocks and all will come with a plate with the um, kunkuma and everybody will put some money and take the kunkuma so i got curious <laughs> i asked the priest daughters of the priest what's what's that place all about they said we'll take you there so we walked and it's called mastikatta and there are wooden figures there wooden mm-hmm. very tribal kind of wooden figures of women that that they apparently they're prayed to mm-hmm. and that this man stays there and makes sure you know when people stop by because they want the anugraha or the blessings of that then i started digging into mastikatta these were women who were raped in the forest mm-hmm. imagine imagine how that has changed because they went through that much suffering anybody who is passing by that way would feel the effect mm-hmm. to prevent the ill effects of that they established mastikatta and that's not the only mastikatta when i read about karnataka's history there are other mastikattas in different places and they all represent this mm-hmm. so i'm just thinking about this psychology behind therapy behind i'm not making any any big conclusions but the fact that such things exist again that's is being worshiped is it not what about the the vrindavanams of the the ah, good point the, good point the brindavanas the vishnu vishnu sampradaya you go to udupi when i went to udupi temple i found that uh, there's a place that's the basement so i peeked through the window there's a whole bunch of tulsi pads there so i asked whoever was with me what's that going on they said those are all the saints the the people from the madadipadis yeah. when they die their body is put inside the um brindavana and people pray to that and then uh-huh. even i notice even probably less now but in the train when you go you will see in people's homes sometimes the brindavana is kept pretty far away mm. what are the chances that they have somebody buried in there mm. mahara this um, um the what is the famous person uh the madhva 
Raghavendra Swami predicted this is what you should do. I'll, they built the brick. This is how I heard the story. They built the brick thing and he is doing japa. He said, when this falls from my fingers, then you put the oh, last no brick. Question. And I'll be available for 300 years. Yes. He even said how many years he's available yes. and mm. his energy is available. You know? So that's why people go and get the sand from there and bring it home. So again, it, it all falls into this category here. Our simple Tulsi madam in our homes mm. falls into this right here. Mm. Mm. No? Yeah. So there again, Bata Vriksha, Vilva Vriksha, mm. Tulsi. Mm -hmm. I don't know why we don't pray to the cotton plant. <laughs> <laughs> we love yes. cotton, right? Yeah. Our body loves cotton. Yeah. How come we don't yes. pray? To <laughs> we should start praying yeah. to the cotton plant. <laughs> I got some cotton seeds for that purpose. I said it from the seed bank. And I said, because I know I'm a highly allergic person, okay? And I said, I've never paid enough attention to you. <laughs> you make my life so good. Anyway, I always wondered, India with her background, why didn't she come up with something? Maybe there is something and we don't and know. And turmeric and so many things. Ah, ah right, right, right. right. See, <laughs> they make Ganesh out of turmeric. Mm -hmm. You know, Haridra mm -hmm. mm -hmm. See, all of that goes here, into that. We are trying to give a form to, but always remember the Sukshma Rupa is the mantra. Everything else is the grossification of that suksh suksh. Puri Jagannath, what is that? Puri Jagannath. Oh, Puri Jagannath. There's a big story behind that. Yeah, right. And every few years, they will go to the forest, yeah. and this person will know which tree which will produce yeah, it yeah, and all yeah. that. Yeah. I think, this is just my theory, they were appealing to the tribal people there. Yeah. Because if you look at the tribal people's... Uh, um, different things mm. that they do mm. because that style is a yes. strange yes. style, no? Yes. With the stump for hands mm. and everything. They say it's Narasimha because of the Ugra. Huh? People say it's actually Narasimha. No, not really. No, it is Balarama. There is one place for Shiva. Shiva there though. He's just in the form of a pillar. I think the guilt complex when we eat it. <laughs> you know, we get that guilt complex when you're too much into one sampradaya and there's another sampradaya that has had its sway there. You say, oh, I don't want the kopa from that one. You know, therefore... It I was that. actually all Shiva, they say. In the, even Krishna used to worship. Yeah. yeah. Well, so I, I'm, I'm not sure. But I just think that's kind of getting your guilt yeah. feeling. Even there are stories about Tirupati, you know, who Tirupati statues, this and that. I have one question. So I was told the, the rishis, they, they devised these mantra and all for 330 million deities. Is that I, I, I don't know, but I've read that too, that we have. But I don't think we can stop at that number. I think we keep creating new ones. New ones. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I think I, I think I read it first in some Western concept about the, the millions of devtas. I don't think that is really coming from the Rishi part. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. But there are some unique uh, like a technology for each, each deity. A unique tantra mantra. It depends, yeah. it depends. Like when you go to when you go to Tamil Nadu, when uh, like Kanyakumari area, I found there are deities there that hardly other people know, but the local villages all know. They may be there may be no Padati associated, no Rishi associated with it. Like there is Yakshiamans. There are Yakshi Devtas. No? Uh, probably nothing associated with it. Because these are local customs. You know, but they do the worship, they do the puja too, but they may, may not be any uh, mantra tantra associated with that. No, this mantra tantra and all became associated with a higher, I don't mean more sophisticated, but I feel like more detailed devata concepts, you know, that came about. But that doesn't mean others uh, didn't exist. There are a lot of very interesting uh, Tamil Nadu devatas that the Japanese people have done research and brought it out. Mm. In Chemmanyur um, or some outskirts of um, Chennai, they have Asian Studies Institute they have established. They're doing a lot of research into the old, uh, the concepts, you know, that Ayanar. Um, Ayanar is usually in the villages outside 
He's he's made out of this huge terracotta, and he's like. I've a, seen, yeah, yeah, yeah. You yeah. know, and yeah. they're saying Ayappa hmm. is actually a form of Ayanar. Kailan vorti umadi sam kailan. Yeah, it's like a protective hmm. Grama Devata. Hmm. So all of that still exists, but you know, people are now going back to it. I noticed a few years ago when I drove into drove in uh, in from Chennai to Madurai and all these places. Sometimes I've seen these new new. Uh, creations of terracotta which I had never seen before and I think it's slowly coming back the old devatas I'm sure in Andhra also they have all these uh, local devatas yeah, Ram devata 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 devata. yeah they are very very important very important. Very, very important I know we have left the grama and we are gone <laughs> but still that doesn't <laughs> mean that they are not important they are mm. they served a great purpose a lot of these mariamans Mm-hmm. Such variety of mariamans mm-hmm. are there, right? Yeah. For there is smallpox, for chickenpox, yeah. for everyone has yeah. a separate yeah. devata. Yeah. That's why I told you we have an obsession. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what's, her name, uh, what's her name? Your friend Deepthi? Yeah, she was telling me in her village in Karnataka. They have like their village is bounded by two, two, one, uh, one devi on each side, and she was mm-hmm. it was uh, Gramma devata. Yeah. Gram yeah. Yeah. yeah, even our surname has a devata. ಅನೇಕಟ್ಟೆ He was promoting his village Gram Devata. Oh. He even had a statue there made out of, you know, and I'm looking at this Vedanta and I'm saying, ha ha, it's come to this, ha ha, you have to come to the mother eventually, ha, you can't run away from your mother with all your Vedanta. <laughs> so that was amazing and he brought the person who, who sculptured it and everything. It was beautiful. It was really very beautiful. Okay, so let's move on. Okay, now... Uh, Samagri means all the things that are used in the, for a puja and that's pretty much why don't you name them and then so we'll be done with it you said already huh? yeah lamp um, dupam dupam flowers prasad if you remember five are important ones naivedya water what and some kind of fragrant yeah, stuff yeah, like yeah. chanda and all of an essential oil chandan. you have um, pushpa. Pushpa. pushpa pushpa you have lamp mm. and then dupam dupam agarbatti right mm. and then in addition you have some edible stuff like yeah. fruits or anything yeah. yeah. okay yeah. and very important the samagri to keep akshat ah. mm. okay akshat is very important mm. because Akshat is the substitute for anything that you don't have. Oh. Mm. Isn't that beautiful? Yes. If you don't have, don't worry. If you, as long as you have some Akshat, you just offer that. How do you prepare Akshat? Just, it's just plain rice. rice. Now, the, in Karnataka, what they do is they wrap it up in a turmeric and ghee. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, that's a custom, but not necessary, I'm saying. And the other one is cotton, mm. what do you call, cotton strips. Mm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Have that handy, why? Mm. That takes the place of mm. clothes. Mm. Oh, okay. Mm. Oh, I didn't know. Uh-huh. Yeah. Because if you yeah. want to say, I want to offer clothes to you, mm. you know these Gopalji worshippers? Do you know who I'm talking about, North Indian Gopal Ji worshippers? Mm-hmm. They are an extreme in terms of providing stuff for their little Gopal Ji. Mm-hmm. They even make flannel pajamas for winter. Oh, wow. <laughs> I'm not kidding. Is this in Rajasthan? Rajasthan, yeah, Gujarat, yeah, yeah. and parts of uh, Haryana. Mm-hmm. Huh. Oh, of course, Bengal, I forgot. They're Gangho Gopal Ji worshippers. Mm-hmm. They even keep a little fan during summer. Oh, oh wow. nice. <laughs> yeah. They, they, it's, kind of, it's kind of sweet. Do you know this Uma Bharati, this famous person? Yeah, yeah. When, before she became this famous, mm. I had been for a VHP conference in, uh, in Boston, and suddenly 
the head of the VHP said, we're going to get some visitor come, I'm not going to be home, so could you please make sure the guest is... And this young woman walks, knocks at the door on a rainy day, and, you know, turns out it's Uma Bharti, okay? And then, so I kind of make it all nice for her and everything. Evening, she comes and knocks on the door, my door. And I'm sleeping in the computer room because I wanted to be away from everybody, and the computer room is on the bottom. She knocks on the door, and I said, what's the matter? She said, I'm afraid to sleep. So I went. Turns out, on her table, she has little Gopalji. So she's one of the Gopalji. I said, you know what, Uma, you're so fond of this one. No? Keep that one in your bed. You'll be able to go to sleep. She slept. They are so attached, so attached to the Gopalji, you won't believe it. And they, whatever food they eat, they will go put it there first. Oh. Yeah, and it, it's, it's sweet, but, you know, uh, but I'm not so sure people have the time anymore, but the, for those who have time, it's, it indicates the Nawabi cult. You know, at one time, Nawabs were very important in India, no? So all the uh, upacharas that they do, this particular sampradaya does, will show you that it has to do, they were mimicking what the royal people used to do. Hmm. What the royalty used to do is what they are mimicking, and you'll see it further in their temples too, the indication of that. Anyway, so, okay, so that's that's that. In the Samadri, just a few things. Uh, you know, in the temple they do this uh, Kalpura. Mm -hmm. And now what did they do? Mm -hmm. Bad. Mm -hmm. What they do? They, they turn it off. Turn it off. Oh. Mm -hmm. They turn it off now. Yeah. What's the point? Then don't do Kalpura, because Kalpura is supposed to work out your karmas. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The moment you're doing like this, you're saying, please help me exhaust my karmas. Mm -hmm. If you turn it off, mm -hmm. not good. Okay, remember that. Mm -hmm. Let them do what they do, who are we to tell them that? I'm just saying, please know that. The oils that we use, mm -hmm. what is the oil that you normally use? Sesame oil? Sesame oil? Or uh, most ghee. The, uh, ghee. Okay, the rule on that is if you are lighting, like I have a sesame oil lamp there, right? Mm -hmm. Now I have to turn it off. Right, mm -hmm. right. But if it's ghee, don't turn it off. Mm -hmm. Oh, why? Well, you can turn it off, but preferably don't turn mm -hmm. it off, is what I'm saying. It doesn't have the same principle as the, as the kapura, because again, ghee lamp is an ex helps you exhaust your karmas. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So sesame um, oil? So any oil, any oil for that matter, not just sesame. If it's an oil wick, we don't turn it off. Why? I mean, we have to turn it off. Why? Because there's a term in Malayalam called padandiri. That means the whole wick mm. burns, right? Mm. Don't allow that to happen because oh. who resides in the oil? Lakshmi. Lakshmi. Oh, oh, man, I've been letting that happen. Oh, no. Who is residing in oil in our belief system? Lakshmi. So please do not let, let, let it burn all the way. Okay? You now, you know. now, now you know. And now. how is there a process for extinguishing yeah, it? Yeah, how do we... Yeah, just like that. that. That's good enough. That's yeah, what that's I do. good enough, okay. you know. If you do with the flour, sometimes the water content will go. You mm -hmm. just do it that way. Now, interesting. You know when we do haven, sometimes the flame is not high. I have seen priests go like this. But may, they make the air go through the, yeah. not like yes, that. Yes, 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 yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've seen them do that. I've seen some people do that to the lamp too. I wouldn't advise it. I would just say, just do this. That's good enough. That's, good. That's much better. Okay, so th those are the only things I can think of is that people don't talk about that very much. Also, at when the puja is finished and you have all the water and everything there, that becomes your charanamrita. Mm -hmm. That is what you... And it's nice when you have these Naimitika pujas mm -hmm. and Kamya pujas, not so much when you have, but these two pujas, the flowers and everything that you have used, mm -hmm. please throw it somewhere where people's feet don't go. Mm -hmm. So usually put it, make a hole mm -hmm. under a tree and then, you know, because... Again, there are vibrations that are associated with that. That's why. You told us that for the Navaratri Puja this time. You yeah, us yeah, the yeah, Navaratri yeah. Puja. In Kerala, Navaratri Puja, all 10 days, we don't even remove the flowers. Only on the last day, they remove mm -hmm. them. But that's just a Kerala custom, mm -hmm. okay? Okay, so far, so good. Utensils that go with all of this, okay? 
pure, I don't have to say that. And the utensils are very interesting. You go from one state to another, you will see the variety in the utensils mm -hmm. that people use. It's very interesting to see that, you know. The metal of the utensils? Uh huh, metal. Okay. Yeah, I, do, I, I think silver, bra is it brass that we use? Brass. Yeah, this Copper. Steel should not be used. Yeah. Sort of. This, I haven't heard that steel should not be used, but I don't, I haven't seen people use steel. I think it's probably a personal preference. I'm, I haven't heard anything against it, you know. But the, I'm not saying, okay, therefore, mm -hmm. since I didn't, they didn't say anything against it, let's use it. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I'm not so because sure. Because of iron and uh -huh. Saturn association. Because it has iron in it? Oh, and that would Saturn make sense. That would yeah. But iron can come in handy sometimes. <laughs> iron, iron... Mm. Bracelets come in handy, so it's a question of how you use the iron, mm. I guess, huh? That would, that would make sense. That would make sense. So, I'm not so sure any, anything is more preferable. You know, it's a question of people's wealth. Some homes will be, everything is on beautiful, shiny silver. Mm -hmm. I have not seen gold, but I've seen gold bands around the silver. So, I'm not going to say much on that. But the interesting is to see from state to state, when you go, you'll see a difference in the, the way the things are made, which kind of makes it nice, really nice is, to is, see. Is there a significance to using terracotta for the lamp? I heard that's auspicious. I particularly like terracotta because I like the Mother Earth, mm. and so I, I, it's just a particular preference. I'm not, I don't know if there's anything. Okay. Yeah, I've not heard anything. Is there um, a difference between clay and terracotta? The terracotta, she was talking about the clay now. Yeah, yeah. that's what she's think. talking yeah. about. So, um, her lamps made out of flour. Ah, yes, I see that. Yeah, yes. my mother used to make for uh, uh, when she becomes mature, uh -huh. then she would offer. Um, rice flour with good mixed in it, uh -huh. and then she makes a little hole right, in it right. and put the ghee and. Or even the, even the, uh, the lime, which is... Uh, oh, the lime turned over, that's yeah. for Rahu. Rahu. Oh, that right. is for Rahu. Oh, oh. And you usually use that for one mandala, 40 days. That mm -hmm. Every Tuesday for 40 days. Mm -hmm. At from 3 to 4.30 or something is the Rahu. Yeah, Rahu that, that's, that's for uh, alleviating Rahu dosha, which I didn't know about, but our the Devi who was in L.A., uh, some after some days after doing puja to her, I don't know, if third year, fourth year, the milk would turn blue. Mm. So I first thought something was wrong with the milk. Mm. No, nothing. Everything is okay there. But when I pour it on, on the devi, it would turn blue. So I called uh, Levamore and asked the Revichandra, Pandit Revichandra. He said, Amma, that's tell your friends if they have any Rahu problem, <laughs> they can come there and light the lamps because yeah. she has that power. Yeah. <laughs> Wow. So, um, yeah, there's a lot to all of this. We don't know. We really don't know. I should send my son. He's living in the same town. <laughs> Tell him go to the temple. Yeah. Well, he must get the motivation. <laughs> you know? yeah. Asanam is make the seat comfortable for you. Okay. I noticed that in Karnataka, my one of my friends, her mother had a very severe arthritic problem. So she made the, uh, uh, the her altar in steps. Mm -hmm. And she brought a little stool and she sat there and did all the puja. Fine. Mm -hmm. Important is don't struggle. Mm -hmm. You know, you should do it in a comfortable mm -hmm. manner. I, I will never say that, you know, sit on the floor. Or, and Come on, if you're in pain, you're not going to yeah. pay attention to <laughs> the, to, yeah, to that, yeah. to the, you know, what you're doing. So that's more important. Okay. <laughs> With this framework of the puja, mm -hmm. if you have this framework, then any puja can be understood. It's a question of expansions. The ones like this, expansions like that. There will be an expansions here. But basically, this is what it is. Okay? And the order is pretty much consistent throughout length and breadth of India. Pretty much is it. So we start out with Shanti part. And that's because we are coming from wherever we are coming from. Mm. We're dealing with kids. Mm. Now they are all settled. I'm going to have to sit down and do puja. My mind is still with the kids. I need to move away from there. Therefore, Shanti part. 
So what are the common Shanti parts that you can think of? Can you think of? They are all from the Vedas. Asatoma Satkamaya. Asatoma Satkamaya. Sahanavavatu. Okay. Om Bhadram Karne Vishrunayama Deva. That's a very good one. Bhadram Pashima. Those are our Shanti part. That establishes our mind, brings it to a certain calm. Okay? And then you have your purification. Purification is usually done in the form of Achamana. Achamana. Okay? When I was getting initiated by the Dalai Lama into the Manjushri Upasana, they made us do achaman. How? Mm -hmm. There was a gentleman, two, two monks, with one with bucket of water mm -hmm. and a little cup, and another one with a plain uh, bucket. Before we entered Dalai Lama's presence to get the empowerment, we had to do achaman, mm -hmm. but we usually swallow the water. They don't. They spit it into the bucket. Mm -hmm. And then, so they have it too. Mm -hmm. So, and they're usually... It's a question of what you're used to. So I, 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 this is not my Thirumeni's training, because in Thirumeni's training, this achaman takes place while you're having a bath itself. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But normal is when you sit for puja, you do achatayanama, govindayanama, yeah. anantayanama. Yes, That's right. probably the most common, but if you're used to anything else, no problem. But three times. Right. Why three? Three. Karana Sharira, Stula Sharira, Sutra Sharira. We want it, the um, purification for all that. That's, that's why right. three becomes such an important. Three is important from in Greek religion too. Nine is important in Greek religion yeah. too. So, all right. So, so far good. That's now you start off with that. Then Guru Ganapati Vandana. Imagine Guru comes even before yeah. Ganapati. Okay. So you do any kind of Guru Vandana you have. Just to share with you, um, in the Tirumeni's training, I establish the Guru and Ganapati on my shoulders before I do puja. Mm. Isn't that fascinating? The whole system, you know, that was totally new for me, all of that concept. What about they do the Brindhi Mudra? That, that's different. That's Nyasa. We are not going into nyasa at all here, but remind me to bring it up, then we'll take it. So you do a prayer to Guru, mm. and you do a prayer to Ganapati. Mm. Okay. Then you have Sankalpa. Mm. Sankalpa is not for Nitya Pujas. No Sankalpa for that. Mm. Absolutely no need to do mm. any kind of Sankalpa. But when you do a Kami Puja, mm. you've got to do. And what do we do usually? What do we do in a Sankalpa? Um, we will we, we establish the time, uh, why, uh, why we are doing this, Parameshwara Pritiyartam. We call upon different, you know, generally it's Parameshwara Pritiyartam, but it could be something else too. Uh, this is why I am doing it, you know. And if the priests will tell you, Shweta Varaha Kalpe, Vaivasar Mantare, Man Mantare, and all of that. And interesting, in Mukambika, they will talk about Sa Saurashtra Desha. In Karnataka they do it, okay, but they call Saurashtra Deshe in their Sankalpa. Very interesting to listen to Sankalpa sometimes. But that's not necessary for your Nitya Pujas. But if you do a Kamya Puja, Naimatika Puja, it becomes very important. For a Naimatika Puja, it is at that Sankalpa that you tie the thread, you know, for like Navaratri and all. Okay. You just remind yourself that I have taken on a certain vow, I will not eat whatever, or I will do every day morning puja. Some sankalpa are done. You tie that to remind yourself. Mm. You know, and when it's finished, the last two, when it's done, again either throw it under the tree or tie it to a tree. Mm. Okay. Um, anything else on the sankalpa? Then you have gantha. Mm. Sound. Mm. Mm. Okay. Agamartham to Devanam, Gavanartham to Rachasa. Mm -hmm. I never say, I'm not asking the Rachasas to go away Sweet. in my mind. Mm -hmm. Can you please repeat that? Agamartham to Devanam, mm -hmm. Gavanartham to Rachasa, mm -hmm. Purve Ganthara, Purama, Devatahuan, Lakshana. Mm -hmm. What are we saying? By doing this Gantha, mm -hmm. please show me mm -hmm. the presence of, make the presence of the Devatas available, right? Gavanartham to Rachasa, why? 
usually people will say it's because we Rakshasas can disturb the puja. Mm-hmm. For me, I say you stay outside and keep guard. <laughs> 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 because you're like bodyguards. You're very strong. We need you too. So you, I'm doing puja. You people, you, you Rakshasas stay outside and make sure nothing happens. <laughs> because you have the power. <laughs> because I don't... You see, in the Devi Mahatma, the Devi is also Mahasuri. You have, you can't say, even it takes evil to show what good is. It's a part of creation. Okay, you can't totally dismiss it. Not that we are going to follow that path. I'm just saying it's like in the Kabbalah, there is, uh, they, do, they don't think Satan is the one with horns and things like that, okay? In the Kabbalah, they teach you, if you are in the, in the school, in the football team, you're training the football team and everything, and then they're very, very good. But how good are they? You won't know how good they are until they compete with another school. Until they compete with the other school. So the other school becomes what? The opponent. Mm. <laughs> so the opponent is Satan in the Kabbalah. So I'm saying evil is, is necessary. And I think Tagore has said, evil is a Vestal virgin consecrated at the altar of the good. Mm-hmm. Tagore said that. She's that evil is a Vestal virgin consecrated at the altar of the good. good. Something to think about, huh? Mm-hmm. Especially with the times we are going through, right? <laughs> <laughs> so, okay. So, all right. So that, with the gantha, we do what's called dikbandhana. Okay? Dik means what? Direction. Yeah. Direction? Field here. Field. 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 Yeah, direction is correct. But here, we are, when we say dikbandha, we're talking about uh, directions in all the directions, directions. so therefore the field. Okay? Dikbandha. We are closing the field. When we close the field, that means we are bringing our energies, focusing the energies, right? Yeah. So that we can concentrate on what we are doing. So that dissipation is not happening. So that there is no dissipation. No, no dissipation. What is used for Big Bandha is Gayatri. Always a Gayatri. Always a Gayatri. I'm not talking about Savitur Varenyam Bhargo Devasya Dhimai Diyoyona Prachodaya. Suppose we are getting ready to do the puja of Ganesh. Vakratundaya with Mahe. That is the Gayatri then that becomes appropriate because we are doing a Ganesh Puja. Mm-hmm. Now, if you are doing general, like many of the people's homes, they have multi devatas. <laughs> okay? <laughs> so then what to do? Stick with that Savitur then because that is good for general, okay? Mm-hmm. But Gayatri is how we do the Dikbandha. It is with the Gayatri that we are closing the field. Remember that. So that these are, to make an ef- puja efficient, that is important. All right? Mm-hmm. So without puja, um, you can say Gayatri too. Is there a... Is I there mean, a you can say any mantras without puja. Mantras doesn't mean you can use it only for pujas, pujas. see? Mm-hmm. Right? Mm-hmm. Okay, now, um, Punya Jala. What are we doing? I didn't have a better word. So we are um, um, sanctifying the waters. And how do we usually do that? Do you know any idea? Tulsi. Tulsi. Okay, Akshata. That is the mechanical things. But what is it that you say? Ganga, Yamuna, Ganga, Yamuna, 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 how will that? How, I mean, question. I'm asking question mark. I'm not giving an opinion. I'm just saying, how efficient is that here? Efficient, mm. I think. Because there, there's Mississippi, there's Colorado. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Should we be calling those rivers? Yes, think, think this about is all that too. Think about it. I'm just saying, think about it. I'm not giving you the answer now. Think about it when you we are talking about efficiency, right? Yeah. Shortcut. Just call Varuna Bhagwan. That's it. Oh. Mm. Ah. Mm. 
Just call Varuna Bhagavan. It doesn't matter. Yeah. Doesn't matter which part of the world you are doing. Just Om Bhur Bhur Swatat Nila Purushaya Vitmehe Jalabimba Adimahi Tanno Varuna Prachodayat Bas. Okay, no worries. You do it in Japan, China, <laughs> anywhere. anywhere. <laughs> it doesn't matter because Varanapalwan is there in all the waters, okay? So that is what we use for sprinkling. I remember that's not what we used here. Oh, just plain water for Achaman. Personal Achaman, we just use plain water. But here we have all these fans, fancy things. Uh, one of the nicest things is in the Vaishnava temple. The water is very... T mm. You know what they put? Mm. I figured it out. Mm. It's saffron, mm. it's a cardamom, mm. and cloves. Mm. Don't put too much of all this. Just a little bit. Okay? And that, such fragrance mm. <laughs> it is. So, and they do. They will also, in the Padmanava Sabri temple, no, in, in uh, Guru Ayur temple, they add saffron to our chandan also, even as they're doing it. Uh -huh. So that's why Guru Ayur chandan is mm, so good. Yeah, I okay. Recording. <laughs> yeah? We have all this on now to remember through the recording. Yeah, good. <laughs> Next comes Dhyana. Now, this is, a li this is going to be very interesting mm -hmm. because if you have an altar that has Ganesha, Shiva, Krishna, what are you going to do? <laughs> what are you going to do? I'm not touching the gurus, by the way. I will not, this, I will not touch any human. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm into this. We are talking about the devatas, okay? So what are you going to do if you have so many? Pick one based on the day. Huh? Pick one based Kula on the day. Devata. Mm. What Kula Devata? Pick one. So in my, our, my, my uh, parents' home, center is Mukambika. Mm. Mm. Then there is Shiva on this side, and mm. Kartikeya, and then Ganesh, and then Krishna and everything. <laughs> Why she is in the center? My father is the most important person in the house, right? Mm -hmm. And his Ishta Devata is Mukambika, and eventually she became Arkula Devata. So she's, she's there. Mm -hmm. Then my suggestion is, if you have time, you can do Dhyana on all of them. But most of us don't have that kind of time. Pick one and always keep that centralized. Mm -hmm. So your focusing will be better. I've seen that when I mean, people don't do that, they're not able to focus properly. So whoever is, we are not discriminating, we are just giving them an ecological niche. You sit here, you sit there, you sit here. You know, I had all the Shaiva Devatas one place, I had all the Vaishnava Devatas on one. When I had an altar like that, you know, and I was very comfortable because they were logically put, you know. So, use that one and have a dhyana. What is a dhyana then? How does the dhyana come? In what form? Chanting of the mantra or huh? chanting of the mantra? Shanti came in the beginning, no, Shanti. Now we are now concentrating on the Devata, yeah. right? So when we, it has to be associated with the Devata, Devata Dhyana. Mm -hmm. So if I said Shantadaram, Bhujagashayanam, Padmanabham, Suresham, that means I am doing the Dhyana for Mahavishnu. Mahavishnu. Mm -hmm. Which form? Uh, the Ananta so if it's a standing Vishnu, it will not work according to my Thiramini. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. It will not work, I mean, you remember previously I explained about a dartboard and they are trying to get to the center of the dartboard. If you do, if you are having a standing Vishnu, let's say, and you are doing uh, Shantagaram Bhujavashanam, you will hit 80 or 70, but not the bullseye. Mm -hmm. You talk about efficiency. Remember, I'm bringing that word efficiency, efficiency every time. If you want it efficient, the dhyanam has to fit the rupa. Mm. If it is Bala Krishna, mm. then you do a Bala. Mm. Is it available? All it's all available. Mm. It is all available. Mm. Just just look it up. If you have trouble, let me know. I'll find out because we have Saparivara Puja by uh, the Kundangalam people. They have done ever so many dhyanas, mm. all kinds. <coughs> so if you have trouble, just let me know. I'll send you the dhyanam that's particular to that. So that is when you are concentrating on that form, okay? And that form then 
is in its sushma, sushma, isn't it? Mm. It's sushma, isn't it? Now you have a picture, right? We Which can. is thula, isn't it? Mm. So we need to bring that sushma power of the energy of the sushma into the stool. Believe me, where does it start, the avahana? Not from outside. Mm. From inside. From here, uh -huh. then outside, mm. and then, so it's a three-way process. Mm. So some people would just like to take a flower, mm. hold it like this, mm. hold it out. Mm. And it, ideally it's nice to have two, mm. because you will see, so you go like this, mm. and let's say you go from here, because it's your mind, because everything is starting right there, then you go out, mm. so you have flower mm. into the picture, mm. down. Does that make sense? That just the physical act makes mm -hmm. a lot of sense, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. Yeah, isn't it? So that is the avahana part. It's simple, isn't it? Not complicated. Anything complicated so far? No. Oh, when we did the punya mm. jala, at the time, it is important to hold something into the water mm. with your finger, mm. like a little uh, leaf mm. or something. Mm. You know. Some people put like this uh, mango leaf. Uh, yeah, something, something that con that connects your finger mm. to the water. water. Okay, it, it is a very important thing. There's a lot of stories associated with that. I don't want to go into it because be, mm. I want to move forward though. But it's very important. So I forgot to tell you that. Um, okay, uh, 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 all right. Then, swagatam. This is depends on how much time you have. Would I recommend that for your nitya pujas? I doubt. Maybe Amma has the time to do. <laughs> <laughs> the others won't have the time to do it, right? Mm -hmm. What are we doing in a swaga? It's important for you to know. Because essentially, when we are doing puja, you know, how, how are we treating the devata? Can you think of any example as to how, what are we doing to the devata? Like a mother or a father. Yeah, it's, it's like a welcome asana, just get guest. Mm. What? Thank you, that was the word. It's a guest. Mm. Mm. So we don't want the guest to stay. After three days, if the guest becomes a pest, okay? <laughs> I cannot treat the guest with all these acharas. Mm. That's why it's very, very important. I'll tell you, it's very, very important you will see. Because here at the bottom you will see what? Digmoksha. Mm. Digvimoksha. You are digbanda because it's oh. okay, I'm done, goodbye now. We cannot continue. It's very practical. <laughs> okay. Okay, so first what do we give? I think in terms of guests, that's why you, the word guest was important there because we are saying, please sit, right? Mm -hmm. Asana. And then like golden days, what we do? Uh, wash the feet. Mm -hmm. Wash, which even in the Christian religion, that is very important, washing the feet, yes. right? Padya mm -hmm. is washing the feet. Argya. <laughs> Washing the hands. Ajamaniya, mm -hmm. giving water. But I do argyam after that again. Just to say, okay, mm -hmm. <laughs> to wash my hands. So, and then snanam. Mm -hmm. Okay, how do we do all of this? Simply just pour a little bit of water into the uh, pot. Unless you are in that time and the mood and the energy, you have a nice vigraha. Hey, feel free to do everything to that vigraha. Feel free to do that. But I'm thinking about what is more practical, you know. So that, that's, and if you feel like doing asanam and padhyam, even asanam is done in the form of water itself, okay? Mm -hmm. All of that. Padhyam, argyam, achamaniyam, and snanam. Hey, you want to make it complicated, you can do panchamrita snana, dugda snana, snana, everything. That's what I'm saying, is this is a simple framework. Can you see now, it all fits into this. Mm -hmm. You can make it as complicated as you want, but the framework cannot change. Framework will Now, why can't we do the Manasa Puja, like you said, the Devi Manasa Puja? Oh. I like that much better. <laughs> Hold, <It's easier. laughs> Hold on to it. Hold on to it. Hold on to it. You know, the advantage of Manasa Puja is, 
you don't have any adulteration to worry about. <laughs> when I don't take the uh, chandanam from Padmanabha Sabi temple anymore, I just walk away. Why? Because they add rice flour to the chandan. All right. All right. Good kumkuma, when you go like this, it should be yellow uh, fingers. Yeah. Mm. Only Not then right. it's good kumkuma. Otherwise, uh -huh. it's all uh, artificial uh -huh. stuff. No. Be very careful. Yeah. If you do take kumkuma mm. and you go like this and knock it off, your fingers should be yellow mm. because it's made from turmeric. Turmeric, okay. oh. turmeric and lime. Lime, either yeah. process it, mm. but th that is how you know it is good kumkuma. Mm. Otherwise, it's rubbish now that mm. they're, mm. you know, so. Anyway, chandals, chandan also same thing. They are not doing this. They will put some little sandalwood uh, essence, you know, into it and give it color and chandra, even the powders, you cannot be mm -hmm. sure. So anyway, so far so good. Alankaram after that, up to you. Yeah. You don't have to. What is our famous substitute? Action. <laughs> <laughs> Happily, see, you won't have any guilt feeling also. Yeah. <laughs> here you are, here's your alankara. So, consciousness. Mm. 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 All of that, everything is there <laughs> in that. Okay? So, between those two, you can take care of everything. Simply said, alankaram samarpayami. Please remember the word samarpayami. You can attach it to everything here. Yeah. Okay, now, to make it more efficient, you add that to all the summer payamis. Mm. Mantra. Simple mantra. You attach a simple mantra to all your summer payamis. That starts from, I have to give you a point here, I forgot. This is a summer payami, summer payami. All of these, you attach summer payami, that means I'm offering. Mm. Again, you do that, okay? Here, I forgot to tell you something. My Tirimini was telling me that, again, in terms of dhyana shlokas, those shlokas that have the word one day and nama are not efficient. So, and I was thinking, oh my God, most of the <laughs> shlokas we say, nama. dhyana shlokas have dhya, uh, nama or one day. It has to have dhyana in it. Mm. Then mm. it is efficient. Mm. Because nama you is your bowing down to, to right? If you are going from here to out to here, dhyana becomes more efficient. Mm. Mm. So there are, there are shloka. Dhyayet uh, ananda kandam paramaguruvaram jnana dirksha kadaksham chin mudram sat samadhi sukriti mano mandiram sundarangam shantam chandravatam sam shabadigiri varo tunga pite nishannam chinta ratna viramam shruti vinita padam boruham bhutanartam Starts with dhyayet. Shabri bala shabri. Dhyayet. See, so you can use that. Like that. Again, you need, let me know, I'll find one for you. Because between North Indian texts and Kerala texts, there's plenty of dhyana shlokas I have, and we can always select. Uh -huh. So mm. that one, Shanta Kara, Yogi Vir Dhyana Gamyam, Dhyana Vadam. Yeah, it's yeah. there, uh -huh. but it has Vande Vishnum Bhava Bhaya Haram, Sarva Loga is there. So, so that, one day is there. That, uh, that yeah. offsets it. Yeah. That I offsets see, I it. See. Okay, so that's something to remember. It might take a little while again. The word is how efficient, how efficient do we want it to be? Okay, we may not get to 100% right away, but eventually we like to do that away. Okay, so that's the point about the uh, dhyanam, I have to say, okay? I think in Lalita Sasana, how about Sindhura, Navigraham, Dhanayana, Manika, Maudis, Purthara, Nayaka, Shegaram, Smitha, Mukhi, Mahapi, Navachur, Ruham, Panibhyam, Alipurna, Ratna, Chachakam, Ratnot, Palam, Vibratim, Saumyam, Ratta, Gharasta, Ratta, Charanam, Jayet. Jayet. Hmm. Except, have you ever seen this form that I just chanted? Sindur Aruna Vigraham Tenayana. I will show it to you. I have not. I have always say, have seen so many pictures of Lalita Ampika, but none of the pictures are... I found it. Are, are, are I found it in a, in a Hindi magazine called Kalyan, long ago. Because I used to ask one Swamiji called Shangotonam Swami, very... 
very mischievous Swamiji gave us. I said, he is big like that. Sahasa. I said, Swamiji, have you seen a dhyana, that, I mean, picture that goes exactly? He says, no, I've never seen it. I've never seen an interesting point, he said. But then this was in my head after that. <laughs> Kalyan magazine had, it's coming from Bengal area. Mm -hmm. Beautiful, she's sitting, her one foot is sitting on the Rakta Ghatas, the Rakta Charana. Mm -hmm. Very beautiful. Yeah, so I have it probably in the in the garage somewhere. I'll show it to you. So it's nice then. Of course, it's a Bengali touch. Therefore, you have, if you're used to the South Indian type of, of uh, thing, and if, if you don't have any prejudice, you will enjoy that too, believe me. Mm -hmm. Okay, so again, those pictures are nice to find pictures that, uh, slokas that go exactly like the picture of the or the Vigraha, no? Okay. So we stopped at Alankara. So all of here is Samar Parami. So I said, okay, mantra. What is the mantra then that you would want to use? Something simple. Take, let's take Ganapati. Mm -hmm. Suppose we're doing puja to Ganapati. What would be the simplest mantra then? Gam Ganapati. Om Gam Ganapati Namaha. Easy one. Come on, come up with some others. I am uh, No. Cream. Shreem Cream. Shreem Cream. Is that mantra? That is a shloka. A shloka. Yeah. Yeah. What about Om oh, Shreem Cream Cream Glow Gangar Cream? That's a longer one. Yeah, yeah that's fine. Shreem so, but the simplest one is Om Gangar Namaha. Okay. Um, Om Mahas Om Saom Mahasaraswati Namaha is ha and sa mm -hmm. and om. It's kind of hard to pronounce. Mm -hmm. Maha Saraswati Enama. Suppose you didn't put so. Is it okay? Sam Saraswati Enama. Huh? Sam Saraswati Enama. I don't think I have seen that. I was just taught that. Yeah, yeah, because I haven't seen that as yet. You're mm -hmm. using the very first letter. Sam Saraswati Yeah, Sam Saraswati I've only seen ha, sa, sam from here. So uh -huh. there might be others. There are lots of uh, Bija Mantras, mm -hmm. right? So I'm not saying that, you know, so I haven't run into it, that's what I'm saying. Clean but come with this, Klim Mahakarya in Nama is easy. Ananda Govinda. That one. So you already know simple ones. So you don't use really long, complicated uh -huh. ones is all I'm just saying. Okay, just try to, even if you use just, in, the most common mantras are what? Shreem, Khreem, Om, and Gam. Gam. Uh, Go for I'm 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 used for Saraswati. That's a good one. Okay. I'm a, I'm simple is for Saraswati. Yeah. Okay. So keep it simple and you attach it to all your summer payamis. Okay. Got it. Now we have what's called Jaladi Jalanda. That's a Kerala terminology I'm using. Jaladi means start with the. It's easy to remember. Start with water and end with water. What is in between? Panchopacharas, which you already mentioned. Water, then Gandha, Pushpa, Deepa, and Jalam Kalpayami, Lam Prithviyatmana Gandham Kalpayami, Hamakashatmana Pushpam Kalpayami, Yamvayatmana Dhupam Kalpayami, Ramagnyatmana Deepam Kalpayami, Thwam Amritatmana Amrita Maha Nevedyam Nevedyami. Okay? Okay, but as I said, I'm bringing a Kerala concept here, okay? Mm -hmm. So in the beginning you offer water, mm -hmm. right? But when you finish the deepam, you have to offer water. Okay. To, oh, wow. Almost like cooling off. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's why it's called Jaladi Jalantam, okay? But this week is easy because you already are doing it in your Nitya mm -hmm. pujas. We are not, we are now giving you a little extended one and whenever you are in the mood to do it, it is available. Then we have Nevedya. Why do you suppose I have have any idea why I put a red mark on that Nevedya? Just guess. Give you a hint. When Nevedya is being offered in that temple, what happens to the door? Closed. <laughs> <laughs> yes? Yes. Door is closed. Do you know why? Have any idea why? This is the only pair where our Vedic sacrifice is taking place. Our ancient Vedic Havana is right here. And that is closed. And it's closed for more than one reason, okay? 
One, I'm giving you one reason. Mm. That's why it's closed, but there are more reasons to that. Nivedyam. Okay, so that is where you have to call your physiological systems. We use the word swaha there. Mm. Om pranaya, swaha, abana. Where do we use swaha usually? Only with the Agni, right? Mm. Yeah. Mm. Swaha. That is coming from our Vedic heritage. Mm. Om pranaya, swaha, apanaya, swaha, vyanaya, swaha, udanaya, swaha, samanaya, swaha. Kerala people will not say Brahmane swaha. Mm. Other people will say Brahmane swaha. Okay? In our tradition, we are not allowed to say Brahmani Swaha because of the, I told you, our, our achamanam and all takes place while we take the bath itself. And there we do more things, okay? So, nevedyam usually is cooked. Cooked. Mm-hmm. Cooked food, okay? And then this is a good time to offer fruits too. Okay, and when you do the actual, you can either put drops of water or you can just put petals as you're saying the Swahas onto the food, okay? And what are you, you're, you are by suggesting that, that is a food being offered to your devata. Yeah. And after it's offered, at the end it becomes prasad. Prasad. Mm-hmm. Not before, right? Yeah. After that comes rajopachara. Again, look, these two are not for nitya pujas. Mm-hmm. Okay, rajopachara means the word itself tells you all royal things. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Uh, Gitam samarpayami, Nrityam samarpayami, Vedam samarpayami. All this fancy, fancy, fancy stuff. Remember I told you Nawab cult, the Nawabi kind of cult <laughs> comes into shows. Daily right? Manasa Puja is there, right? They dance and right. music. And yeah. Yes, yeah. that's right. The Manasa Puja, it comes. That's a beautiful piece Shankaracharya has done, no? So, so that, that's where that goes. So now when you go to the temple, you know what's happening. Right? So, okay, after that you do your archanas. Mm-hmm. Now she has had or he has had his food, is ready to listen. Don't keep waiting. <laughs> 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 Don't do archanas before food, okay? <laughs> think, mm-hmm. think of us, mm-hmm. right? The way we are, right? So, so now you do archanas and what? It's all optional. Mm-hmm. Whatever archana you do, it's based on your time, you know, how much time, yeah? Some people will do Lalitas or, or you know, Sahasranama and all that. Mm. But nice thing to do, 36 times the mantra. 36? Because uh, in Sankhya philosophy, there are 36 tattvas. Mm. 36. 36. 36 building blocks for this universe, mm. based on Sankhya philosophy. Therefore, it's very nice to do that. It mm-hmm. brings a certain feeling in you that all these lengthy, lengthy sotras won't bring. Mm-hmm. It's very, because you've been using that mantra all the way through. Mm-hmm. And, and then, yeah. in one of our traditions, in the tradition of Bitrain, we even go like that, let's say, Om Reem Dum Durgaya Namaha, is one mantra, right? So, Om Namaha, Om Namaha, Om Namaha, Om Reem Namaha, Om Reem Namaha, Om Reem Namaha, Om Reem Dum Namaha, Om Reem Dum Namaha, Om Reem Dum Namaha. You go like that. It's, when you finish that, something happens. Something happens to you. It's worth it, okay? So, here you can, I'm just suggesting it for you to try, you know, instead of doing the lengthy ones, try see reinforce the mantra that you are already using all the way. Okay. So, I have a question. So ah. Where does this Ashtottara and all? Well, all here. Ashtottara, Sahasranama, all goes But those Ashtara. are now 108 and those... So. Yeah, I know. So, so 36 is when? 36 is all I'm telling you, you have the option I of see. doing 36. Mm-hmm. I'm not saying do it. You have the option of doing 36 just for you to figure out what happens to you when you do it. Mm-hmm. When you do the 36, as opposed to doing Ashtottara, as opposed to doing Lalita Savar, each one gives you a different feeling. That's mm-hmm. what I'm saying. Mm-hmm. You know, one does not negate the other. Mm-hmm. It's worth trying. And why is it also worth trying is, uh, 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 there are many motives for doing puja, okay? I, I don't want to forget, I will ask, ask that again. Why are we doing pujas, okay? I should have asked at the beginning, mm-hmm. okay? I didn't ask that question, did I? No, that was an important question to do, man. I should have asked in the very beginning. Okay, don't forget at the end. 
Now we offer Deepam your question, that Panchamukha Deepa, or there's a tortoise Deepa, mm -hmm. you know, all of those fancy, fancy mm -hmm. Deepas you can use here. Mm -hmm. So that's where we lit the Deepam. Oh no, you had Deepam Jaladi Jalanta. Mm -hmm. You had a single wick one, mm -hmm. just there. Fancy ones come here. Oh, okay. And then we have Miranjan because this is where the Kalpura comes. Mm -hmm. And now you all know, don't do that wow. to the Kalpura, okay? Mm. Then you do production eh? in your own place, okay? And now we go do the same thing that you did here. Mm -hmm. Don't say Agamartham to Deva and Agamartham or anything. <laughs> Just do Om Bhur Bhur Swat. The, the Gayatri that you did here, you repeat it here. Oh. It, 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 do the Gantha, but don't say Agamartham to Deva. You do the Gantha with this, okay? Just write Gantha so you don't forget me. Uh, you do the Gantha right here, okay? But you are just doing the Gayatri, Akratundaya with Mahe. What did you say? How did you say your Ganpati? Egadantha with Mahe, Akratundaya with Mahe, Tanno Danti Prachodya, Iti Digvi Moksha. Iti Digvi Moksha. Iti Digvandaha, Iti Digvi Moksha. As I said, a guest is a guest, can become a pest. So let's, I'm done with the puja. <laughs> I can't go every with you everywhere like this. And then you have chamapana. Mm -hmm. Nice. Right? So you just say, no. Kriya hina, yeah. whatever you know, that's important, you know. And then whatever is collected, you always have a little under these utensils, you have a pot where all these things go in. That becomes your charanamrita. Okay? So far, so good. I have one question. Yes. So now... Many times these priests, they read beside Mantra Pushpa. Hmm. What is that's that? That's a fancy thing. What is that? That has to do, I told you, Navabi days, Raja days, that's what it's... <laughs> if you listen carefully, this was done for the sake of the kings. Ah. <laughs> now we have to do it for Trump? No way. <laughs> no way. No way. We want a good person to come to the, to occupy the White House, then we can do it for that. Yeah, that's what it's for. It's for a preservation of the society mm. under the monarchy days. Mm. Okay, for us it's not important. Mm. I mean, there is a relevance to things, right? If you just don't do, do blindly, there has to be some relevance, right? There is that. Ha it has no relevance anymore. Mm. And I'm saying if it's, it, it's unless somebody makes a sankalpa and says, okay. Uh, we want Modi to win again or something like that, then you do. <laughs> okay, because he sort of occupies the Raja's place, right? So, okay. So far, any questions? Because now my big question is going to be, why are you doing Pujas? <laughs> the one big question I forgot to ask. So, any questions on this one so far? Um, is that after Kshamapana we turn off the lamp? Yes, or? turn off the lamp. Turn so. off the lamp, yeah. Unless it's made of ghee. Yeah, yeah. ghee. If it's yeah. ghee, preferably don't, I would say. But sometimes it's not safe, no? That's why we yeah, have... Yeah, you, you should leave it. Yeah, okay. okay. But, but the one thing you should not turn off is the kalpura. So just use a little. Don't, don't use too much, you know? Mm -hmm. You can break it off and use just uh -huh. a little. One question. Where does Hanuman Chalisa fall in this? Ah, uh, you can do it on the Achana part. Towards the end. After food. My favorite. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. So you can do it at the... Uh, that's a very powerful one too. Yeah. Extremely powerful. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. We did it. Malibu Temple didn't have a Hanuman. Mm -hmm. And so they asked us... They asked me to conduct a Hanuman Chalisa. So we did uh, 40 people, mm -hmm. 40, 41 times mm -hmm. Hanuman oh, Chalisa, wow. and then uh, wow. Malibu Temple was able to hours. establish. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Took many, we even did for uh, Ram, Ram and, Ram and Sita weren't there, they asked us. Mm -hmm. Those days I was involved with Shandhya Parishad, right? So somebody called uh, from the Malibu Temple and said, would you do Tosi Rama and Akhand? Hey, mm -hmm. this is a South Indian. Why are you asking a South Indian to do uh, Tosi Ramayana? Mm -hmm. but, I called my uh, North Indian friends, Punjabi, Hindu Punjabis. I said, 
Oh, ma, this is what is the request. If somebody asks you, you have to do it. <laughs> Put the fear in me, right? <laughs> now I have to do it. You know, I've heard it, but mm -hmm. what shall I tell you? I opened the book, mm. started it, led, found shifts because it's a kind of no. I had to find enough people. Vijay and my husband and I took two o'clock, three o'clock, and all that. Nobody wants. We started it, and then in the shifts, nobody wants to come at two and three. Mm. We did the two and three o'clock ones. Mm. And fine. And I'm sitting in the front of the Avakateshara right there, the whole bunch of people. These North Indians thought I was a North Indian. Mm. You tell me, did I receive help? Not a single mistake. And you have to chant it a particular way. You can't just do, do it. There is a particular way to chant. How did I do that? I have heard it. But that doesn't mean I practiced it, right? Mm -hmm. I'm telling you, Hanuman helped. Mm -hmm. He will help. <laughs> he will help. His energy is still available, no question yes. about that. Don't ever question that there are some energies like that available. That Saint Benedict is like that. Mm -hmm. His energy is still available. Mm -hmm. Yes. Anyway, okay, that's a whole different thing. Okay, now, good, big question. Why? Why do you do puja? On it, we have to speak honestly on this. Otherwise, we're not going to find the answers. Why do you want to do pujas? It's the way I like. Kind of, I start my connection with the God. Okay. Like, this is the way you connect with God. Okay. Shri God. Um, I think to give a discipline to the day. Sometimes you know, have a ah. feeling. Uh -huh. yeah, I mean, it's, like, a, it's a it's a nice discipline there. Yeah, yeah. something like you know, it puts you in that mode. Okay. Like in other ways, yeah. Um, same thing? Like, I'm serene, I want to feel like that, peaceful. That you, the the feeling you get after puja, uh, yeah, that's yeah. something you look forward to. Then I play all, it, all the world, Loka Kalyana also. Just yeah, one of like Loka Samastha Sukhi no Bhavatu, like that. You, through this, may others also benefit. Yeah. benefit yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, Gita, Chula. It, 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 gives a structure to spiritual sadhana. The yeah. you know, ultimate aim is to connect to your own soul. Okay. So I think the structure is necessary. But because so in these times we have such mind wanders so yeah. much. Yeah. Can maybe put this question another way. Suppose one day you didn't do puja for whatever reason. How does that make you feel? Like I nowadays I started chanting this mantra internally so it doesn't matter for me puja anymore, okay. kind of okay. so Continuously chant if I yeah. can do that. But do you like a day, some, so it doesn't bother you. Suppose you're not able to do puja, let's say. It doesn't bother you that you're not doing it. Is that the same? Or no, I, I can see the difference. You can. So, so when I don't do my kriya. Uh -huh. uh, kriya is different. Yeah, but let's whatever, do. if I don't sit down and do my do chanting, it. of course I. I mean, this this is something I can now incorporate. Yeah, but with that but little ritual that I you can do, see you don't do it, you feel, yes. that you feel the Absolutely. difference. Absolutely, the aratin is very critical for me. Yeah. No, I'm going to push it a little further. How much of that feeling has to do with guilt of not having done? Question mark. I'm not saying it. Yes, there, there, might, the there might be an element there, but... Uh, oh, I didn't I, do puja today. Oh, is that the part of this? Uh, but I don't know. It, it seems like I can be off center more easily. Okay. Okay. You know, if I okay, when you do the puja you I feel I don't know everything. yeah, I something yeah. Hard to really feel everybody it. concurs on that? Yeah, I mean I did notice, you know, when I used to do like uh, uh, when mom is not doing and I was doing that uh, Something, something beautiful, you feel that energy. Mm. Like you know there's really? something like I cannot explain. It. It's like almost okay. like yeah and not just me. When my friend came, who is uh, very much into, he's also very, uh, like, you know, he does his own things, yeah. right? I didn't know anything. I did everything. He came, he did his own practice, and he said, after he went away, he, one day he called me and said, Srikant, I, I see, not just feel Hanuman's energy, I say, I have seen Hanuman in your place. I believe you. So did my husband. Yeah. So because did my I husband. He has seen. He has seen. Yeah. So... And he's, I mean, this is not out of imagination, yeah. all it actually happened. So th that's another whole yeah. area we won't get into it. Mm. You know, it's not a fanciful imagination mm. or anything like that. There is some truth to it. And um, there are explanations to it too. It's, I wouldn't say it's anything magical. Mm. It's part of, it's part of 
uh, universal laws. There are certain laws that are operating there, okay? Yeah. And that's, we are tapping into those laws when such things happen. Uh, but there is also dangers in that, okay? There are, there are dangers also in such things. So shall we say that, can we concur that when doing puja brings up, in, even in its simplest form, but doing it daily brings a certain amount of centering to your system? Yes. You know, it makes you it makes you cent center your system, and then for that reason alone, it's a very valuable mm -hmm. thing to do, right? Mm -hmm. You agree on that? Yes. Now I'm going to throw you another thought that's not for you all to practice. Mm -hmm. One year I stopped doing puja completely. I told my husband, I want to see what happens to me when I don't do puja. Do you mind? <laughs> my husband's a very good person. <laughs> he was a very, very good person. He got a little bit scared because I'm the big puja person in the house, right? And all of a sudden I say, well, one whole year I'm not going to do puja. I want to see what happens to me. I really wanted to see what happens to me. I was prepared. Okay, what happened? Nothing, Nothing. except I went into Sufism. Mm -hmm. Aha, mm -hmm. see what happened? Mm -hmm. The need to connect with God remained. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And how did that happen? My younger son was taking philosophy, and he had this uh, book by Idris Shah as part of his text. It's all Sufi stories. I know nothing about Sufi. He said, Mom, I have a hard time figuring out these stories. Can you explain to me? I got locked into it really good. He said, wow, when you read those stories, you can know the truth, but it won't come out of your mouth. Imagine. Your mouth will not let you tell the truth. But you are able to re see the truth in those stories. Mm -hmm. Is that the strangest feeling? Then I went into Kabir and everything. <laughs> that holy Guru Nanak Kabir. See what happened? No pujas, but connection, connection with the God. Yes. And my poor husband, he would like the lamp again. <laughs> everything for the house. December of that year, I was in Calcutta, and my sister-in-law, one of my sister-in-laws, coming into the house. Uh, my aunt's house, my husband's aunt's house. And the first she's saying, put your hand out. In a very abrupt, sweet way. It was pras Prasad from the Ajmer Durga. Oh, wow. Mm. <laughs> oh, wow. Aha! <laughs> so I said, okay. <laughs> I, as long as you keep the connection with the divine, that's it. I couldn't, it was by nature. I couldn't be without that connection. Okay, so that's a thought. I just want you to sit with that thought. You know, it has nothing to do with doing all of this. I'm just saying it's important. The other one was what my Tirumeni said. When he asked me why I'm doing puja, of course, my grand reply was I'm trying to uh, please God. And said, God doesn't need your pujas. Mm. Mm. Oh, that was a slap. That was a slap for me. God doesn't need your pujas. You need it. You need it. Second line which I, it took me a whole day to figure out. If you want to learn from me, you have to become the devata before you can pray, do puja to a devata. And I'm going, oh my God, where, what did I learn now? Mm -hmm. the of the that is why that is called Uttama Tantra. Mm -hmm. He has only two students, one astrologer and one me, that's it. You have to become a devata before you can do devata. Are you prepared? I said, I need to learn one way or the other. He says, okay, then I'll teach you. Then I will teach you. And so look at that. We started with our simple. Just don't ask me the details, okay? But just to know, it's complicated. He didn't let me write down anything. So morning, 3 o'clock, 4 o'clock, I'm sitting and trying to remember what he taught. My mother said, now you're 40, 50, whatever my age was. Said, you're still studying for exams or what? I used to bring you Orlicks when you were little. What am I supposed to do now? I said, he won't let me write down. I can't remember. He'll come this evening and I won't remember anything. Okay, we start off with Abhivadyam. Don't ask me what. Peter Sankalpa, Shivadi Vandana. Dikraksha, Pranayama, Vyapaka, Anganyasa, Chandasa, Ayudha, Dhyana, Shankapurana, Shankaraksha, Archana to Shankar, Devi Avahana into Shankar, Manasa Puja over Shankar, Kutarchana to Shankar, Mulam over Shankar, Shuddhi, Atma Puja, Atmarchanam, Manasa Puja, Digraksha, Mukya Shuddhi, Peter Shakti Sat. Peter Shakti Sankalpa, Devi Peter Raksha, Peter Puja, Murti Kalpana, 
Avahanam from self to Murti, okay? Vyapaka to Murti, Anganyasa to Devi, Chandas, Ayudha, Dhyana, Upachara to Devi, Argyam, uh, Argyam, then Upacharam with the Argyam, then cleaning the Shankar, then Mantra Snanam, then Murti Puja, Stula Shuddhi for Naivedya, Upastarana, Jeshtha, Amrita, Surabhi, Digraksha of Devi and Naivedyam, Devi Naivedya Archanam, Devi Naivedya Paraspara Bandhanam, Kudikyu Neri Vituga, Prana Huti, Manasa Puja, Raksha to Devi and Naivedyam, Vishram if necessary, Chandasa Mola Chandasa, Naivedya Udvasanam, Nirmalya Dhari, Gandu Shadi, Jaladi Jalantam, then removing of the Naivedyam and everything, Prasanna Puja, Mantra Pushpanjali, Brahmarpana, Prasanarkya, Shankarchanam, Shri Padatirtha, Abhyarchanam, Deeparadhana, Karpura, etc. Um, Avasanarkya, Vyapakam, Chandas, Ayudha, Chamapanam, Abhyavadhyana, Chaitanya Parigraha, Devi Raksha, Pranayama, Vyapaka, Anganyasa, Deha Raksha, Chandas, Mola, Chandas, Prathana, Shankaraksha, Guru Vandana. Just to him. How many hours? Four hours. How many steps is it? Seventy-nine. <laughs> Seventy-nine and four hours every day. You better be in good shape. And that baby is in Portland now. <laughs> oh my the Eugene Devi. Yeah, Eugene. She's moved to Portland now. <laughs> but all I'm saying, this technology is so, so amazing. Amazing, the technology, what's involved in it. After he trained me, I didn't have any murti or anything. So I said, all I have is a little mukam. Because, ah, you, you just do abhyasa, just you, practice. You memorized all the seven? Yeah, of course. You wow. can't keep a book like this. Oh, my goodness. You know, no ways. You had to know. To, which means practice, 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 and pra practice till you don't need this anymore. And then you keep doing it and doing it and doing it. And so after the puja, you're not very good to talk to anybody. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then he told me, sometimes you'll be drained. Mm -hmm. If you're drained, you either you read the Srimad Bhagavatam or you do Panchakshara. Mm -hmm. By God's grace, I was never drained to that point. Mm -hmm. I always had the energy. After I sat for a while, got out of the temple and made the production, I was okay, back to cooking, back to taking care of people, everything, no problem. But I'm just all in letting you know that. Well, especially as a... We have, we have household duties. Yes, too, that's it? right. Yeah. Household, that's why he It's not was, like the men who just have to do that. Yeah, that's yeah. it. That's mm -hmm. right. That's right. And so, yep. Yeah. So, I mean, this is beautiful what we have, you know. So, and it's a technology that is important. It's alchemical too. It is. Because the priest can make changes in the murti by the way they do the puja. I'm not talking about the average priest this day and age. They're all doing it robot-like. <laughs> My teacher would not even look at you when he gives the prasada. Mm. Because he has only one point at Ekagrata with the Devi there. Mm -hmm. Which will be broken if he's giving you the prasada. He will just see whose hand it is and he'll drop like that. Mm. I'm saying that's a rarity, no? Mm. That's a rarity. So... Okay, so with that, I pray your puja is... Mm -hmm. Mikar, you remembered 79, I don't think. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm, this is, I'm just giving you a framework. When you attend yeah. a puja, now you know what is happening. Mm -hmm. That is important. Now you're totally... It's not like the priest is doing something. You know, what the heck is he doing, no? And, and your point about nyasa. We didn't even bring nyasa here. Mm -hmm. Because all, I, all we said is we are using Samar Payami, Samar Payami, Samar Payami, right? Mm -hmm. But when you do Nyasa, it is part of the process of where you are putting, tattooing your body with the mantra. Mm -hmm. You're tattooing, you're actually doing that, tattooing your body with the mantra is Nyasa, through the fingers and everything, you know. And you call upon the Rishi, you call upon the Chandas, mm -hmm. all of that. that. That is more... We are going more and gave you the just simplest. And what is the other one? Other one is in the in Kerala, we don't use the mantras out loud at all. Mm. Kerala mantras are all silent. Mm. And so it becomes very boring for most people to watch because you can, with others at least you can hear what they are saying. <laughs> but our Kerala things, it's, you, they won't yeah. 
because it's more powerful. It's powerful, yeah. The power is in here. But you will see mudras. Mm -hmm. They use a lot, a lot of mudras for everything. Okay. Then we come to your point about Manasa Puja. What is the best part of Manasa Puja is there is, you won't run into any kind of adulteration problems. Mm -hmm. Whatever Samagri is where, Chaitanya Kusumaradhyaya, Chaitanya Kusumapriya is all coming from here. Mm -hmm. So you are offering the best. The purest of ingredients can come from here and that is there in that Devi Bhagavat explains the value of Manasa Puja. I think the, the, uh, Parvati is conversing with the father Himalayan there mm -hmm. and explains the value of doing Manasa Puja. Okay, and can you sit in a car and do it? Yes, you can. Yes. <coughs> Isn't that beautiful? Yeah. And does it take this long? No, it doesn't. You can do Panchopachara Puja easily just sitting in the car. Shiva Manasa Puja is also there beautiful. All of yeah. these devatas have. That is a shloka we're talking about. I'm talking about actual Manasa Puja, not reciting Manasa Puja. The other one, Hrileka Mantra, is the shloka. Right, right. Right. I'm talking about actually doing Manasa Puja. Yeah. That means it's, you just do it with what? With your body. Imagine. That's it. Imagine. Your mind and your body. You have your fingers. We have Karamala. We don't need Mala. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You go like that, you know, then you do... The, Ten, then you record it here. <laughs> so you don't even need a japa mala, right? So I'm just saying, all of this is available. In other words, there is no excuse not to do it. There is no excuse because we have to agree it brings about a certain um, focusing of energies by doing it every day. But keep it practical. Don't do extended one day and then <laughs> other day no, nothing at all. Keep it minimal and doing it uh, every day just just makes sense. So I, I don't quite understand, so I misunderstood. So the Manasa Puja, I thought like when I heard the Devi yeah. Manasa Puja, I am ima if I understood the Sanskrit, yeah, I would just go through the motions mentally. That's fine. But you said something about the No, on. see Manasa Puja, you're talking about the shloka. There are yes. shlokas on Manasa Puja on all the major deities. Okay? okay. But there is a Manasa Puja where you don't have any shlokas. Ah. Okay, mm -hmm. where you have to just sit and do it yourself using the very components of your body. Oh, that I that you have to teach us how to I'm not allowed to, unfortunately. Even this I cannot teach. I mean, they have to give you the authority to mm -hmm. teach, right? Mm -hmm. I have the authority to teach. So then how, how do we learn? If you want to do Manasa Puja, we cannot unless you you're keep, you initiated? You keep the question. It's not a question of initiation as much. Uh -huh. You keep the question going, the answer will come. Somebody will come who, who's authorized to. I see. That's what I'm saying. Somebody who's authorized to teach. Like for the 79 people asked me, can you? I said, I have, I have no authority to teach this. Mm -hmm. You know, that, that uh, I never asked him. I don't know if I would have ever asked either. This itself was a lot. It was hard. It's another thing to teach. Like I've studied Carnatic music, but I don't like to teach Carnatic music because I don't think I'm equipped to teach Carnatic music. You know, on the other hand, dance, yeah, of course. I'm equipped to teach. One thing is to do it, another to, to, to become a, a Bharatanatyam um, teacher, you have to learn Natavangam. So I learned Natavangam so that I can teach Bharatanatyam to, so, you know, the teacher's training is different, no? So for this also, I have no authority, I have no authority okay. to teach the Manasa Puja either. But Manasa, that no shlokas are beautiful because it helps you to get into it. And I kind of worked on that one by using the visualization to the one that we have, it's on the YouTube. I added that from my own experience. I added that to that shloka. Okay, I, yeah, when you when you're speaking So I'm just then, thinking, okay. if you may want to see if you have the Manasa Puja to Shiva, see if this is applicable. In this case, because the Panchadashakshari was there already, I used it. Mm -hmm. Are there ones to Shiva and Ganapati like that? I don't know. I don't if there is, so. it might be interesting to see so. if you can add a visualization mm -hmm. visualization to it. You know, I, have, I, was, I was forced to teach a visualization to an art, uh, professor of art in Florida. He did the Sri Suktam, Sri Suktam, so much, so much. He says, I want more. And I'm thinking, I don't have any more to give. What should I give this person? 
then for 12 days or so I was in, Ant uh, in Norwalk at that time and something came through, you know, how to do that. And then I did it first, otherwise I can't teach, no. And then I, it proved correct, then I gave it to him. And at the end he sent me a beautiful painting he had drawn based on the Sri Sukta. And of course it was a long letter about how that need got satisfied, you know. Just never know. There was one person who did the Ganesh uh, uh, Upanishad and the Ganesh, the uh, uh, avatars of Ganesh uh -huh. in there, uh -huh. no, in the, on the website. Mm. This fellow, Gibson or some name from New York, after four, I didn't hear him any from the, they just write the answers those days, you know. Now I don't do, because after my husband, when, while my husband was sick, I couldn't attend to all their questions, so I said, self, you know, test yourself, you know, I can no longer answer. So I never heard from him after the fourth lesson, so I thought, well, maybe some people give up, right? A few months later, <laughs> I get an email from saying, this course was so great, I decided to go to India and to go to, go to Maharashtra, where all the Ashtavinayakas are. Oh, wow. Mm -hmm. He took off <laughs> from there, visited all the Ashtavinayakas, he said, I had to go and visit all of them. That was the extent of the Upasaka that he was, Ganesha mm -hmm. Upasaka, you never know. I have a wonderful Lalita Upasaka in Sacramento. Mm -hmm. he's, a, he's an expert on Western and Eastern mysteries, David Allen Hulse, quite an expert. The mm -hmm. things that he has reaped through his person is amazing, amazing, not just in Lalita, but in other things too. So there are people like this all over the world who have achieved a lot.